All right, guys, today I'm going to be building a couple of Appian uh, G5 recovery machines. Um, this one here is not pumping, and this one is not pumping well, and it's spraying oil out the front. Um, and also, um, it needs a new switch. Um, I do not have the switch right now, but I'm going to probably just end up going to like O'Reilly's or something and just getting a switch. Um, this is the kit you're going to need for it. It's the KTG 520, and it gives you all the valves and O-rings and plates and all the crap that you need to get this done. So I'm going to go ahead and get going on taking the machine apart, and I'll get with you here in just a minute with that. All right, kind of got things cleared away here. First things first, we got to take the machine apart, um, and there's only four uh, Phillips head screws. Um, two on the top, two on the bottom, and it has nuts behind it. So sometimes the nuts stay in, sometimes they'll fall out, so just be aware of that. So I'm just going to go at it with the Phillips head screwdriver. And basically the shell um, comes apart in half. And the handle is actually its own separate piece. Um, so when you crack it apart, the handle is going to come out completely. And then what I do is I just kind of... Um, Fold it all open and then the bottom comes out and it's kind of like clipped in at the bottom here it's got these two little snaps i guess you could call it but when i open it up those just kind of come out all on their own so we'll take the machine apart all right so if you've never done this, this is what i'm talking about the handle kind of comes off as its own piece so i got all the all the screws taken out and like i said it's only four screws um so i kind of peel it apart and then the handle comes out on its own this is what i'm talking about so uh, let me get it apart and um this is a good opportunity not only to rebuild the pump itself, but get in there and clean out all the crap that's in here. And you'll see here in a minute, these things get real dirty. So um, good to get in there, get it all cleaned out and you know, extend the life of your machine because these are not cheap. Um, so once I get it all apart, we'll dive into it. Now, as you can see here, you can see how dirty it is in here. This is the pump that was spraying oil. Now, I, I have a couple of things that I'm a little worried about. Um, I'm hoping it's just, you know, as easy as rebuilding it. Um, my employees have obviously abused this pump. I got the start cap way up here and it's supposed to be mounted down here. Um, but I guess that's kind of besides the point at this moment in time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put all these pieces in the bucket here and that's where I'm going to clean everything is in that bucket. And, um, yeah, this thing looks like it's been it's been tossed around, which um, really disappoints me. So, all right, so let me finish taking it apart, and we'll uh, hopefully get this thing working again. All right, I got the casing all taken apart here. Um, taken, tooken. <laughs> Anyways, um, spinning this fan, this should not spin this freely and this easily. Um, so there's definitely something going on with either the seals or this pump is just completely screwed. Um, I've had really good luck rebuilding these pumps when I have issues like this, but this one is um, this one's just really kind of torched right now. Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know how this really all happened. So, um, got some got some work to do to this thing, um, and I really hope that it's still salvageable at this point. All right, so what I've decided to do with this machine, particularly just because of its condition, is this is going to go a little bit further than just rebuilding it. Um, we're still going to do the rebuild process, um, uh, but typically what, you, what I do during the rebuild process is I just undo the um, copper lines here, these flares, and then you pull off the valve cover, and then there's a plate and things that we'll see here when we get in, into it. Um, but I need to actually pull this front panel off because I want to clean um, these these coils because they're really nasty um, so I actually need to take off the controls and the pressure gauges and then we'll be able to uh, pull the whole front cover off so that's what I'm gonna do right now uh, it's gonna this one's gonna end up being a little bit more involved but I guess follow along if you want all right so I got the pump uh, completely taken apart here all the plastic -y crap is in there um, so this is obviously where the uh, gauges were this was the valves and that's where you hook your uh your lines up to there um now when i pulled off the brass piece here there's supposed to be a screen in there and as you can see there's no screen in there so um what we did start doing is uh i bought some um inline filters 
um, that we're using on the machines that I've already rebuilt. I had eight of these that I needed to rebuild. Um, uh, they didn't know, the owner of the company didn't know that these could be rebuilt and um, he was just kept buying machines. Um, so I, I took over a service department and um, yeah, and I guess you can kind of see why. Anyways, um, you can see how gunked up these all are here. So I really wanna, I really don't know the best way to go about cleaning them, but I definitely wanna degrease them in some way. So I might do a light, um, light coil cleaner. But this one here, I'm really worried about this kind of being more of my problem than the actual valves. Um, yeah, this thing's just been thrown around and banged around so bad that this, um, I'm just gonna call it a condenser. Um, is really beat up so I'm gonna inspect this a little bit more I'm gonna actually pull the whole condenser off and I don't know if condenser is the right word or not but that's just what I'm gonna call it so just go with it um, I'm gonna actually pull that all off kind of inspect it a little bit see what what it's looking like because um, if that's messed up I don't really want to waste a hundred you know forty dollar rebuild kit so um, yeah now you just look at this anyways so that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, I wanna take this right side off, um, look at that, see what it's looking like, and then uh, kinda go from there. So, but it shouldn't be this easy, see? Shouldn't be that easy, so. All right, so I'm kinda starting to clean it all up here. Um, I couldn't really figure out how to get the pump off the motor, and I don't really wanna screw with it too much if I don't know exactly what I'm doing with it. So I'm starting to kinda clean it up in place. I got this little manifold block thing off the front of it where the valves go and all that. And I'll start cleaning that. And again, the coils are over here. <clears throat> I'm actually gonna start taking the pistons apart. And we'll get in there, we'll clean all this stuff up real good, and then uh, we'll get to rebuilding the actual uh, pistons um, on both sides here. And that will actually require us using the kit finally. So we're finally getting into the actual like main part of the video, but this is just, uh, ugh, anyways, all right. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna get my, uh, my Allen wrench and I'm gonna crack these all open. That's the wrong Allen wrench. That's also the wrong Allen wrench. Anyways, you know, take these four bolts off and the whole thing slides off. I'll show you. All right, so I have all four of the bolts off now. And I guess since we're kind of on the journey of this screwed up machine, um, Somebody I'm starting to think has actually been into this machine before because these Bolts on both sides were so grossly over tightened. It was unreal I'm surprised I was able to get them out without breaking the Allen wrench. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this off and kind of see the What shape this is in? You can see there's a bunch of oil These are the valves for the pistons and That one's actually not too terrible of shape definitely seen them worse and then this is a whole piston sleeve and there's the actual piston there's a valve plate in there that's actually going to come out here in just a second um there we go and this is the other valve and actually the valve isn't in bad condition the valves uh, are not in bad condition on this one so we're going to replace these o-rings and um, the rings on the piston and everything, that little gold shim there, that needs to stay there. That's the gapping for the uh, piston sleeve. So, um, so I'm gonna replace these O-rings and uh, that's all part of the kit. And then I'll show you something with this spring here, this valve um, in the kit, the spring doesn't come assembled on that I guess you could say you actually got to thread it on there so it actually springs closed again but like I said these valves actually don't look that bad I did another machine and these valves were toast I and mean, you can see this one's broken there's no stem on it anymore and then the other one look at that, was starting to get hot and starting to melt so anyways so that's what we're gonna do for the sleeves um this one has a slit in it you can just pull this one right off just like that and this one actually has an o-ring underneath it and i just use a small little flathead screwdriver and i stick it on to just the sleeve you don't want to nick the, the piston walls or anything 
um, and then I just kind of score it and then I put the screwdriver underneath it pull up and it breaks and then I, I'm able to get the screwdriver underneath the o-ring and just pull it out and not damage the piston and then this whole assembly gets replaced the kit has an entire valve plate assembly and then we're going to be using the same piston sleeve um, we're just going to clean it all up so that's what we'll do on this side all right so in um, cleaning up this this cover here you see the bottom there is really discolored. It looks like it went through the anodizing there and we're down to just bare aluminum. So I actually watched the video back and actually this valve plate um, was in like this and it's supposed to be the other way around. So somebody's definitely cracked into this thing before. And then something else I want to show you. This is the O-ring that's underneath one of those piston sleeves. And I don't know if you can tell on the video how flat it is. This is actually supposed to be round, cylindrical, just like a regular O-ring. Um, and kind of same with all of these. I mean, they're all kind of flat looking now and they're supposed to be just circular, cylindrical, whatever you want to call it. So anyways, um, I got this all cleaned up. I actually used a little bit of coil cleaner, sprayed it out with water and then just blew it out with some nitrogen. Um, I mean, it is what it is. I got to do what I can to get this clean. So looking pretty good right now. So I'm going to start putting the seals and the O-rings and the valves and the new valve plate all together here. Um, and it's all in the kit. That's the old kit. So the new kit's gonna come with the valve plate and all that stuff. I'll open this up and show you. All right, so here's the kit opened up. It's gonna come with the new um, valves and springs and the new valve plates. And then all of the O-rings and gaskets. And then it's gonna come with the new piston sleeves and the O-ring that goes um, right here. There's an O-ring that goes right here. Can't really show where my screwdriver. Somewhere over here. There it is. Um, O-ring goes inside of this first, and then a sleeve goes on top of that, and you kind of roll that on, and then the sleeve with the split in it goes on the back side there that looks shiny. And then uh, we'll put it all back together here in a minute. All right, so I have the little O-ring in there, and then we're going to get the... Um, sleeve that does not have the split in it and what you do is you kind of start it off kind of in place like that and then you get a socket or um, I use the screwdriver the little mini screwdriver and when it's kind of halfway on there what you do is you just kind of roll the screwdriver down and it actually will set into place um, so I'm gonna do that now I just I don't have a tripod or anything to set this on so so you kind of start it off halfway like that and then you roll a screwdriver down it and then it'll slide on so and then once I get this one on we're gonna get the sleeve with the split and put that on the back part of the piston there all right so I got a little bit of uh, oil and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my glove in there get a little bit of oil on the glove and I'm gonna actually put just a little bit of oil around these rings here um, that way when we slide the sleeve on, which where did I put that, there it is. Um, I'm going to do the same thing, a little bit of oil. And then I'm going to do the inside of the sleeve. Now there's a conical end to this, and then there's, like it has like this little bevel there. The conical end, see that, is actually the part you slide over the piston there. And this is what, this part is what seeds into the valve plate. <clears throat> so I'm going to get this um, lubricated and slide it in. All right, so there's two size O-rings. And you're going to get the bigger O-ring and you're going to put it inside of this actual block. And then the smaller of the larger O-rings is going to go on this part of the valve plate. Which I think, there we go. And it's going to seed in like that. So then when we put this all together, you need to make sure that this O-ring is facing out and there's a little notch, if you can see this little nipple there, fits into a notch right there on the block. Now I still need to put the valves in here, but I just wanted to show you where the O-rings go. All right, so I'm starting to put the valves together and you'll notice there's one that has a bigger hole at the end and then one that's kind of not that big. <laughs> Um, so we have this valve here, it's like a cone, and that's going to actually seed into something like that there. 
And then we have this other valve here that's flat on the top. So what needs to happen is the spring that has the smaller hole at the back side actually is going to go into this block here into this top hole. Like that. And then this cone looking valve is going to go inside of that spring like that. It's just going to kind of hang there for a second until we start putting this all together. Now with this valve here, we actually need to put this spring, I'm sorry, we actually need to put this valve through here first. And this is with the O-ring facing up. We need to put this valve through here like this. And then we actually need to thread that spring over that stem. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so that's what this spring needs to look like. It'll focus. That's kind of what it needs to look like. So that valve, once it's needs to do that. Well, you got to thread it through that stem and through the valve plate first. I don't know why that's not focusing, but that's what you got to do with that one. So now what we're going to do, we got our O-ring down in the block there. And now the back side of this valve is going to go into that lower hole. And we're going to line the cone up with the open hole here. Like that. So let me slide this in real quick. It's going to be a little little tight. And it'll slide into place. There we go. So now it's all in place. Well, boys, until the springs pushed it back up. There we go. So that's what it's going to look like. Now we need to put our O-ring and set it inside um, the outer perimeter of that. And then we're going to set it and start bolting it back together. All right, so I got both um, pistons rebuilt all those seals replaced cleaned up everything the best I really could um, got all the shit that was on the motor windings off uh, pulled the fan off and cleaned that really the best I could um, gonna put this block back on um, where the pressure gauges go and I'm going to clean those coils still and then um, I'm gonna put it all back together and I'm actually gonna pressure test it um, I just want to see if um, those coils are leaking at all. So um, I'll come to you guys when I get it together and start pressure testing it. All right, so I got the uh, the coils clean. I got it all hooked back up. And I just got to put the gauges back on. I just wanted to show you guys um, the difference in the coils. Now, I don't remember if I got a close-up on them before, but nice and clean. Um, we're going to put the gauges back on, and then I'm going to hook up to it with the nitrogen tank and pump up each side. And uh, see if we get any leaks. All right, guys, so I got it all put together. I got the valves closed. And I got the system <laughs> uh, holding at 250 PSI right now. And I just pumped it with nitrogen. So uh, I'm going to let it sit here for a good while and uh, see what happens here. So, all right. All right, guys, it's been sitting for uh, probably about 25, 30 minutes, hasn't moved. Um, and in the time that that's been sitting, I cleaned um, all the covers for the unit, um, put the fan back on. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, release this here. All right. All right, perfect. Now, you can see that this isn't turning over is easy now there's actually some compression behind it see it's not just continuing to freewheel so hopefully we save this thing um, looking good so I'm gonna put it all back together now um, the only thing I'm minus right now is um, the power switch so I'm gonna go to probably O'Reilly's or something tomorrow pick up a little switch replace it and uh, this machine should be good to go, but looks much better. Cleaned it up really the best I could. And I mean, that's basically it. And rebuilt the cylinders and pressure tested, cleaned everything. So hopefully with the, the regimen I got these guys on now, um, the company provided tools will be taken better care of because they're going to be held responsible for this type of abuse this ugh. anyways all right 
All right, so here's our little machine all put back together, cleaned up the best I can. Um, you know, I'm getting some suction on it. It's holding the pressure. Everything's looking good. I just got to get the switch on it. Uh, once I get the switch on it, um, I'm going to test it. I'm going to hook some refrigerant tanks up and empty in a full and see how it recovers, see if it still sprays the oil out. Um, we got this one fixed. This one wasn't pumping. It was also leaking a little bit of oil, but it was nowhere. I mean, this one was in decent shape compared to that one. This one was still pretty messed up, but this one was just a fucking pile. So we're, I'm hoping we can save that one. Um, and then we're going to test both of these pumps. And then I got a couple more that I need to rebuild still um, that are just sitting at the office. So, um, yeah, so this one just got to go get a switch. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be good to go. Thanks for watching guys. Sorry this ended up being a lot more than what I anticipated it to be. I just wanted to do a video on the rebuild. Um, but yeah, I mean, you saw what happened. So thanks for watching. Later.